Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Krasner. Um, some of the materials I'm going to present, um, because for the, um, the randomized studies uh, for uh, chemo radiation um, involve both chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Um, I have no uh, disclosures uh, to make. Um, I'm going to discuss the anatomic locations of uh, esophageal cancer. Uh, radiotherapeutic approaches uh, to treatment uh, based on the location in the esophagus um, of the tumor. Uh, also discuss radiation techniques, uh, interactions between uh, radiation and chemotherapy, uh, normal tissue constraints, and uh, present evidence supporting the role of uh, radiation therapy. Uh, some of the uh, evidence uh, has been mentioned by Dr. Dr. Krasno in uh, his presentation and uh, briefly uh, address areas of uncertainty. Um, this uh, is a picture of the, the anatomic, uh, anatomy of the esophagus. The cervical esophagus extends from the cricoid to the sternal notch, and uh, the upper esophagus uh, extends from about 20 centimeters from the incisor to 30 centimeters from the incisor and uh, the lower esophagus um, extends from 30 to 40, including the uh, esophageal gastric uh, junction. Um, as has been mentioned, the predominant histology uh, for the upper esophagus is squamous cell carcinoma, and uh, for the lower esophagus, uh, predominantly adenocarcinoma. Uh, the indications for radiation therapy in the management of esophageal cancer include um, uh, patients with uh, unresectable uh, tumors uh, concurrently with uh, chemotherapy as definitive uh, treatment, uh, preoperatively with chemotherapy or postoperatively with uh, chemotherapy and uh, also for palliation. Uh, for cervical esophagus, uh, these tumors commonly invade surrounding um, cervical structures and uh, the treatment uh, is usually uh, similar to that employed in treating the head and neck cancers. Uh, the problem with surgical management of these uh, cervical esophageal tumors is that uh, it entails significant uh, uh, loss of uh, function, and uh, chemo radiation has been found um, to provide long-term survival while uh, preserving uh, function. Um, the the preoperative radiation therapy used to be employed in uh, esophageal cancer, but um, uh, the, this, uh, the role of uh, preoperative radiation therapy uh, by itself um, has been investigated in several trials. And uh, this, the conclusion is that uh, it offers no improvement in the rate of resection. Um, there's also no improvement in survival. Um, a meta-analysis of uh, five trials of preoperative radiation therapy showed no improvement in overall survival compared to surgery alone. So uh, preoperative radiation therapy by itself is uh, no longer uh, employed in the treatment of uh, esophageal cancer. Uh, the evidence for chemo radiation uh, is provided by randomized trials, uh, some of which uh, have been uh, shown by Dr. Krasner. Uh, Meta-analysis of these trials also confirm the role of chemo radiation. Uh, RTOG 8505 uh, looked at uh, chemo radiation versus uh, radiation alone, and uh, the finding from that study uh, was that uh, the overall survival was um, superior with uh, chemo radiation. Uh, versus, uh, as, as opposed to radiation alone. Um, the addition of chemotherapy improved survival 10 to 38 percent, and uh, the median survival, as mentioned, was 12.5 versus 8.9 in favor of uh, chemo radiation. Uh, RTOG 9405 investigated the intensification of uh, radiation therapy. Uh, to a dose of 64.8 gray uh, with chemotherapy uh, versus uh, the standard dose of radiation, which is uh, 50.4 gray. Uh, the finding was that the local persistence and local regional failure, despite uh, 
the increased uh, radiation dose uh, was inferior for the higher dose compared to the lower dose, uh, which is the standard dose of 50.4. Um, there was a higher, as expected, uh, treatment-related mortality in the group of patients uh, receiving the higher dose of radiation. Uh, there was also a French trial uh, that enrolled 444 patients, uh, predominantly patients with a squamous cell carcinoma, uh, to cisplatin uh, 5-FU uh, regimen, uh, but they used a split course of radiation, uh, 15 gray uh, days 1 to 5, and days 22 to 26, uh, versus conventional radiation delivering a dose of 46 gray in 23 fractions. Uh, I have to point out that uh, speed course has been found to be inferior in terms of uh, techniques uh, of delivering uh, radiation therapy. Uh, the, these patients were then re-evaluated for response, and uh, of the 444 patients, 259 were found to have responded to um, the uh, treatment, and they were then randomized to surgery, versus continued um, uh, chemo radiation uh, using additional cycles of uh, cisplatin 5-FU and additional radiation therapy. The two-year overall survival uh, was found to be 40% uh, uh, for patients treated with definitive uh, chemo radiation versus 34% uh, for those randomized to surgery. Uh, th thus, this sh uh, study shows that um, Doing definitive chemo radiation uh, is not inferior to doing chemo radiation followed by surgery. And uh, established uh, that uh, chemo radiation uh, is an option available for patients with uh, squamous cell carcinoma uh, who have uh, responded to initial chemo radiation and thus do not have to uh, undergo uh, surgical resection. Uh, for those patients who have um, persistent disease uh, following chemo radiation, uh, salvage surgical resection is still feasible uh, following the chemo radiation. So in summary for um, squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus, the efficacy of chemo radiation in the management uh, of uh, squamous cell carcinoma has been confirmed in several randomized studies. Uh, Meta-analysis of 10 uh, randomized comparisons of new adjuvant and concurrent uh, sequential chemo radiation uh, to surgery alone uh, in squamous cell carcinoma showed a 13% uh, absolute survival difference. Uh, the, there was also a significant uh, rate of uh, pathological complete uh, response following chemo radiation therapy. Uh, Dr. Krasno mentioned the uh, cross trial. Um, the finding was that um, uh, overall survival for chemo radiation plus surgery uh, was superior to surgery alone, and uh, the incidence of uh, complete pathological response in this study was 29%. Uh, as far as adjuvant uh, therapy for um, esophageal cancer uh, following surgical resection, uh, there is no demonstrated efficacy of uh, adjuvant post-operative treatments. However, uh, extrapolating from data derived from new adjuvant and definitive chemo radiation therapy studies, I believe that uh, patients who have undergone resection and uh, uh, have positive margins or positive lymph nodes uh, can be treated with uh, chemo radiation provided they did not receive any preoperative uh, therapy. Uh, now switching to radi the radiation therapy techniques. Uh, for radiation therapy, uh, we use 3D conformal techniques, uh, which is CT uh, treatment based, um, and uh, also IMRT. Uh, we can sometimes uh, use both IMRT and 3D techniques. Uh, the treatment should be individualized uh, because these patients uh, have uh, multiple comorbidities. And the normal tissue constraints uh, have to be uh, respected, uh, especially uh, lung toxicities. Uh, this is just a diagram showing the lymphatic drainage. Now, the treatment of uh, radiation therapy for esophageal cancer 
has to um, take into account the uh, tumor itself and uh, the lymph node draining areas. Uh, this uh, shows the, um, the uh, lymphatic drainage of the various portions of the esophagus. For the superior portion of the esophagus, uh, drainage is to the paraesophageal uh, nodes. Uh, they can also drain into the supraclavicular regions, uh, which means for the upper esophageal lesions, uh, one has to uh, also treat uh, electively the lymph nodes in the supraclavicular region. Uh, for the mid esophagus, it's predominantly uh, the paraesophageal lymph nodes and uh, the uh, tracheobronchial uh, lymph nodes, uh, so those have to be covered. For the lower esophagus, uh, includes the paraesophageal lymph nodes, uh, the phrenic lymph nodes, um, the paracardiac lymph nodes, and the celiac axis nodes. So those areas have to be electively treated depending on the location of the primary tumor. Uh, this diagram just illustrates the elective nodal fields. Uh, for the superior esophagus, it has to include the uh, supraclavicular regions on both sides. For the middle esophagus, uh, the tracheobronchial uh, uh, nodes and the paraesophageal lymph nodes, whereas for the lower esophagus, it um, has to include the um, paracardiac lymph nodes, uh, nodes along the lesser curvature of the, of the stomach and the celiac axis. Uh, this is just um, a de demonstration of uh, target volume delineation. Uh, we use CT scan to delineate the gross tumor uh, volume. And the gross tumor volume is then expanded um, to, uh, to, uh, to get the um, clinical target volume, which means areas at risk for microscopic extension of disease. And generally, we add about 2 cm two or three centimeters superiorly, two or three centimeters inferiorly, and uh, two centimeters circumferentially to, uh, to um, encompass uh, potential uh, microscopic extension. And the PTV, which takes into account daily setup errors, uh, add about 0 0.7 centimeters to it. Uh, the treatment techniques for three-dimensional conformal uh, treatments, uh, we can use anterior, posterior fields, and uh, posterior, right posterior oblique and left posterior oblique. Uh, for the IMRT, uh, the field numbers could range from five to nine. Uh, this just uh, illustrates the dose distribution uh, looking at uh, 3D conformal techniques. Uh, this is four-field IMRT, and this is uh, nine-field IMRT. Uh, one thing to bear in mind is the amount of lung uh, exposed to various doses. Uh, here you have uh, the 5.5 gray uh, being delivered to quite a large proportion of the lung, and that can uh, result in um, to uh, toxicities. I'm now going to uh, present two patients, uh, uh, the treatment planning for two patients. Uh, this is a patient who presented with um, carcinoma of the mid esophagus and uh, was treated with uh, four fields, AP, PA, right posterior oblique, and left posterior oblique. Uh, this is CT-based uh, 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 planning. Now, this, field, this uh, volume was treated to a dose of 50.4 gray in 28 fractions. And this represents the dose volume histogram. Uh, looking at uh, the doses to various, uh, to the volumes um, of uh, normal tissue. Um, the mean long dose in this uh, uh, treatment plan uh, was about 920 centigrade, and uh, the maximum, maximum cord dose was about 38. Um, uh, the second patient is a patient uh, with um, carcinoma of the gastroesophageal uh, junction and the lower esophagus. And uh, the treatment planning used to treat this patient, again, was uh, 3D conformal. Uh, the AP and PA fields were treated uh, to 36 gray in uh, 20 fractions. And then to uh, minimize the cord dose, uh, switched to 3D, uh, I mean, three uh, field arrangement, AP, uh, right posterior oblique and uh, left posterior oblique. And this received additional dose of uh, nine gray 
to uh, do so for the five grade. And then a final boost using the same field arrangement uh, was carried to 50.4 gray. And this represents the dose volume histogram showing adequate coverage of the um, uh, tumor volume. Uh, because these patients have multiple comorbidities and uh, this is preoperative treatment, uh, one has to look at uh, pulmonary toxicities when the, these patients uh, go for surgery. Uh, mean long doses um, are predictive of uh, the risk for radiation pneumonitis, and the important parameters are the volume receiving 5 gray, 10 gray, or 20 gray, the long volume. Uh, these patients also have different uh, lung sensitivities. Uh, the chemotherapy also sensitizes the lung to the effects of uh, radiation therapy, so it increases the risk for uh, radiation uh, toxicity. Uh, the incidence of post-operative uh, pneumonia or ARDS is related to the lung, vo the, uh, lung volume receiving greater than 5 gray. So we have to minimize uh, the uh, dose to the lung uh, in planning treatments for esophageal cancer. So to summarize uh, chemoradiation therapy, uh, the uh, cisplatin 5-FE-based chemotherapy improves local control and survival, as demonstrated on the POET study, uh, the CLGB 9781. Uh, the cross trial uh, demonstrated increased uh, uh, pathology complete response, and the overall survival for chemoradiation was superior to that of surgery alone. 50.4 uh, gray of radiation is uh, recognized as the standard dose of radiation. Uh, there appears to be no clear advantage uh, to increasing uh, the dose of radiation. Uh, the uh, treatment as far as radiation therapy has to be individualized, and one can use um, 3D conformal or RMRT techniques to treat the patient. Uh, but uh, long dose uh, has to be uh, minimized. A significant proportion of these patients uh, following chemoradiation have uh, local recurrence. Uh, so uh, post-treatment um, surveillance with CT PET may enable early de detection, and selected patients may benefit from uh, salvage surgery. So to summarize the strategies for multi-modality treatment of esophageal cancer, for the upper esophagus, uh, which uh, is mainly uh, squamous cell, uh, one can use definitive chemoradiation and has been found not to be inferior to um, surgery alone, I mean to, uh, chemo, uh, to um, chemoradiation followed by surgery. Uh, for the lower esophagus and the GE junction, uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy or chemoradiation therapy followed by surgery uh, is the uh, preferred um, uh, form of treatment. Thank you.